All right, hashtag PBT's five questions for Raymond Horta. All right. <laughs> A ver. All right, number one, uh, greatest black comedian besides Richard Pryor. Greatest black comedian besides Richard Pryor, Bernie <laughs> Mac, bro. Bernie Mac, all right. right. Bro. <laughs> Bernie Mac and Patrice O'Neill. Patrice O'Neill. Ooh, baby, those guys are funny. But my style more directly uh, goes along with Bernie Mac, just on top of you, just the whole time, constantly pounding you with punchlines. Mm -hmm. Bernie Mac is my favorite. All right, and he no longer lives, right? No, he I, passed away. I feel he was an Illuminati sacrifice because he didn't want to put on a dress. That's crazy because uh, he died very young. Yeah. He yeah. died very young. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, second question. Uh, the best venue for comedy in the USA. Ooh, good question, man. Um, and you've been all over. Yeah, I've been all over. The best venue for comedy. There's hometown hometown here in the Valley. I'm going to say Sin El Rey. Sin El Rey. That's that, it, it does not get any more professional mm -hmm. than, uh, than Sin El Rey. Like, you want to talk about atmosphere, sound, lights. That's awesome. In the entire country, the hottest room in the country is the El Paso Comic Strip. El well, Paso hot, Comic Strip. Hot, hot, hot comedy crowd. Shout out to everybody in El Paso. Chuco Town. The Reyes family. Chucolandia. My friends from uh, Texas Voodoo Stop. Shout out to them. And uh, Pissing Razors. Shout out to them as well <laughs> in El Paso. All right. Best comedy sitcom ever. Oh, dude. <laughs> Best, okay. That's a hard one, yeah. dude. Best comedy sitcom ever. The writing in I Love Lucy okay. is absolutely <laughs> genius, dude. Bro. That's old, old school. school, dude. Old school. But you pay it like go watch uh, TV Land. Go watch some reruns. Even on Netflix, they might have I Love Lucy. Watch the comedy writing. Just the writing itself was absolutely clean and genius. What about the honeymooners, man? Did that's a good one too. That's a good one that's too. A, uh, este... Jackie Gleason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's they, a good one. But does the the cleanness and the cleverness of I Love Lucy's writing? Mm -hmm. Lucy, in my opinion, is probably the greatest female comedian of all time. There was a lot of good stuff in the 70s and 60s. I mean, you had Gilligan's Island, The that Monsters. Too, man. Golly, the man. Monsters was amazing. The yes. makeup and, you know, Tremendous. the whole... And then they had that beautiful niece that they thought was the ugly one, right? You know, she <laughs> yeah. was the outcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, poor Marilyn. She has to go to school looking like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was like, uh, I like that. The grandpa. Yeah. K K K K that he would drive like a coffin car. All the concoctions inside <laughs> the dungeon. I oh, mean, dude. there was just some Gomer Pyle, another great comedy sitcom. Yeah, dude. That wow, some great. really good stuff. All right. Uh, best comedy movie. Oh, man. My personal favorite best comedy movie that I find funny every time, Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber. Oh, I, right. love I, love I love that movie love that so one. much. <laughs> no way. We landed on the moon. I love, I can quote that movie. So, so you mean there is a chance? Yeah, I love that movie yeah. so much, dude. It's super witty, man. It's a, and every time you watch it, you see something new that you did, like you didn't catch a punchline before. You're like, oh man, like it was, there's, I like the subtle, the subtle comedy yeah. more than the straight in your face stuff. Like the little, little nuances of comedy is beautiful. Yeah. All right. Uh, and last, uh, your best advice in four words or less you'd give yourself, uh, your 20 year old self. Uh, my 20 year old self. Yeah, yeah. Um, God loves you immensely. How old are you right I'm now? I'm 34. You're 34. If 40? I knew, if I knew how much God loved me at 20 years old, I would have been a very, a much more powerful person. How old were you when I saw you for the first time with uh, Juan Villarreal? I was 17, bro. 17. Wow. I was I 17, that. dude. Wow. wow. And I never, when I saw you on stage, I, I never thought that we'd end up working together. <laughs> and it was by chance, ladies you know and gentlemen. You know what's crazy is that they. That guy, uh, Rob Jenkins, they told me to go on stage for five minutes, mm -hmm. but like I just went for 30. Uh -huh. But Juan Villarreal was in the back like, hey, is that guy still going on? And he's like, yeah, he's still on there. And Juan was like, well, let him keep going. Let's see. Let's let, let's let him bomb. Mm -hmm. And I never got off stage. I kept on killing it. These guys are telling me like, hurry up, get off, get off, get off. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm killing it. Why am I going to get off? Yeah. <laughs> like, I broke one of the biggest rules in comedy my first time doing a big show. It's pretty crazy because... What happened with um, the way I ended up working with Raymond, I was working at a radio station in the morning, uh, 99.5, and I had a terrible drug problem. And I finally said, you know what, I need help. I, I need to go to rehab. And I ended up leaving the station for 30 days. And my boss, Larry Safir, who I, mean, I consider a guardian angel to me because he actually helped me get to, through rehab and, you know, left the doors open for me to come back as well to work to do what i love to do which is radio um you know he let me do that and i went to uh 
rehab for 30 days. So when I came back, there was a whole new morning show at the radio station, which was Manu Sarroman, Bonnie Hernandez, and Raymond Orta. I have no idea how they ended up deciding on having you on that morning show. I don't think I've ever found out. I can tell you. Well, tell me how that uh, Mike, happened. Mike Quinn. Oh, okay. Mike Quinn was the one that put the word in uh, like while you were gone. Uh-huh. And Mike Quinn had actually talked to the comedians on an interview on the radio. Yeah. And and he told them he knew who I was. I had already been talking to Mike Quinn for a couple of months that I was a comedian and I was a young guy and stuff. So he he said on the radio that one of the comedians had missed their plane and they were looking for an opening spot. Mm -hmm. So I called him and I, hey, Mike, I'll do it. And he, and he says that in the studio, they're like telling him like, no, like don't get that guy on the, on the, like don't get the guy on the show, like don't do it. And he was like, yeah, we'll do it, man. Yeah, we're gonna get you on there. And he like kind of forced their hand into letting me on that show. Oh, wow. And, and so you went on the show and you got hired to be a, a, a part-timer there? No, like I got hired to do that comedy show that you saw me at. Uh -huh. But that's where Mike Quinn saw me do comedy. And okay. and then when you went, he told Larry Zafir, Hayes, there's this guy that's a young comedian. And he's the one that, that told Larry to bring me in. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. And, and then, so then I, I get out of rehab 30 days later. And I'm the afternoon guy, and I bring in these two street-level dudes, <laughs> Chief and Puro Pore, Pete great Balderas, show. What a great show. who was here with us last uh, last week. And our show becomes one of the craziest shows in the awesome. afternoon. Such an incredible show. And it ended up getting a lot more attention than the morning show. And I would listen to the morning show, and then the ratings came in, and my ratings came out really well. So Larry puts me in the office, and he says, Rock, we want you to go back in the morning. And I said, okay, uh, so who do you want? And I said, well, <clears throat> I want my two guys, Chief and Puro Pore. And he says, uh, and what about Bonnie? I go, no, not, not, not Bonnie. Uh, what about Mondo? Well, Mondo, he'll do afternoons, right? Uh, Bonnie could do middays maybe, I don't know. Uh, but uh, no, and what about Raymond? And I'm like, hmm. And I had been listening to Raymond on the mornings, and Raymond was using all kinds of voices. He had Bill Jingles, Clinton. Dude. He had uh, Sean Connery. He had an India guy, and the India guy was so. And then like he the had Indian weatherman. Yeah. <laughs> Can you show I us? I want to hear that. One. I want to hear it. Oh man. Um, what was his flash name? by the flash yeah. from the That's past? My or, yeah. Name. The voices are my favorite. Yeah. Okay. What was it? Uh, good evening, my friends. Hello. Today we are going to do the weather, and it is going to be very hot. It is going to be raining hot fire from the sky, my friends. It is going to be so hot. It is going to feel like there is hot fire raining from the sky. <laughs> that is your weather. Goodbye. Yeah. And then he would it. do Sean Connery, too. And uh, can you still do that or no? Uh, yeah, I haven't done it in a long time. The name is Sean Connery. I haven't, I haven't been able to do that. <laughs> you used to do a Hawk, lot of... Octopushy. You must be dreaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there you go. Yeah. And then he used to do Bill Clinton, yeah, right? Bill Clinton todavía sale. My fellow Americans, I did not have sexual relationships with that fat chick. <laughs> <laughs> so I, did, I didn't do it. I did not do it. So then when I got, when I was sitting in the office there with Larry, I was telling Larry, look, Larry, I, you know, I've, I've been listening to the morning show and I listen to Raymond and he's got a lot of voices. Um, I want him in the morning with me, uh, but I only want the old man because he used to do an old man voice. Yeah. And when I would listen to Tremendous. him, I would, uh, you know, I felt there was just too much going on. And I, the only one that I really, really kind of related with was the old man. And I was, I, I was him. Valley, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. Oye, mijo. Yeah, there you go. Mira, el problema con este pedo es que pues está bien aguado. So, uh, so, so then I, uh, you know, so he says, uh, Larry goes on the phone. All right, bring Raymond in. And Raymond <laughs> walks in. He goes, Raymond, Rock says he wants you on the morning, but he only wants the old man. And Raymond's like, his jaw just like, shall we thaw, you know, like, well, 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 I want to be on the radio, you know, Raymond yeah. Horton. I said, look, Raymond, just give me some time, bro, because I want to establish the old man. And once we establish the old man as the third wheel, we can bring you in 
you know, as his provider, grandson, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and so. El provider. And so we gradually, we, we established the old man, and he was like kind of, you know, didn't want to do it, you know, and he did it. That was the prideful Raymond. Yeah, it was a prideful Raymond. And he did it, and then we slowly brought him, his persona, in with him. And what would have to happen after that is like, he evolved into a, a two-person guy on the radio that I having was like, conversations with myself. Yeah, like like, like Robin Williams. That was his yeah. name, Plutarco. Right? Plutarco, yeah. 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 So then I was like, okay, man, this is where it's at. <laughs> and Raymond would go from him to the old man and into the bed. And sometimes it's like he would like interject. It was just so flawless. And after that, I think one time he told me, "Hey, now I understand what you were doing, yeah. what you were doing, Rock," because he didn't realize where I was coming yeah. from. Yeah, and I, f I find it funny too is that there was this old lady that went to the show uh, to the to the click office one time, uh -huh. and she was convinced that there was an old man there. Aww. Yeah. And she and she took him like a basket to Plutarco, like she wanted to go to a dance with him. <laughs> and I and I told her, I'm like, uh, yes, ma'am. And she's like, uh, I thought he was uh, this sweet little old lady. Estoy buscando el Plutarco. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, pues that's me, ma'am. No, 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 no. El viejito, el viejito, mijo. And I go, that that's me, ma'am. And and I and she couldn't get, she didn't understand. I go, e ese soy yo, señora. E ese. And she was she was just like. What just happened to my life? Like, I've been living a lie. Yeah. But she still gave me the basket and it was all hooked up. So it was yeah, like, oh it, it was crazy. And then... Uh, yo, we, me mocho, yo me mocho si tienes cheque. <laughs> we, as, as a morning radio program, I think we, we broke some major ground because we created the Clica Comedy Tour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we started that Eres Clica thing, which is like, it just caught fire man we're doing shows com comedy shows Those so what awesome, we started man. doing we started doing comedy tickets like you could only win the ticket with the station you couldn't buy it it's a ticket money can't buy y nos íbamos pa un salón. it was me raymond and chief and then we'd get a conjunto like a conteño you know yeah. some friends of ours and they'd play in between comedians and we would pack that place I mean, with awesome shows dude a thousand and more than a thousand <laughs> people it was like jam packed the first show that we had bro it was like 900 to a thousand people the yeah. first the very first show te acuerdas allá en San Benito in the yeah the, at the Moody Center or see the yeah. shark yeah the shark and and so something. I was like it was like I don't think any other morning show in the United States can do this. I, I mean, we're pretty straight up stand up comedy is the hardest comedy. art form in the world, and we really honed our craft doing those things. And man, it just became so much fun, man. But you remember that time that we opened up for Happy Week and they brought that opener? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, dude, I when Rock got on stage, he did. He was supposed to do thirty minutes. I was supposed to do thirty minutes, and then the guy between the headliner. Was supposed to do 30 minutes. Lo hicimos garras. And he had brought a girl like from Austin. He was wearing a suit and brought her from Austin. And dude, it was the... I felt terrible because Rock goes on stage and just... I'm standing backstage. I hearing obliterated the, it. Yeah. Hearing the laughter hit me in the, in the chest. And I'm yeah. thinking, man, how am I going to follow this? Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. And because, you killed it, dude. You killed it. And then you... I remember you getting off, walking towards backstage. as he goes, pecho y chingón. I te lo dejé bien caliente, Dad. And I, dude, I go on stage and I'm thinking, man, how am I going to follow this? Yeah. Y de repente empieza el tú, tú, punchline, punchline, punch. Yeah. Boom, hot fire, dude. Yeah. Just as hot as Rock had gotten it, the Dumba, the Inferno yeah. just stayed red hot. And then this poor guy has to go on after... An hour of absolute from fire. Austin. From Austin. <laughs> like a little his hipster humor. <laughs> what happens next is like 30 minutes of the most awkward, awful silence I'd ever heard in my life. Yeah. And like well, there's well. a crowd of there's a crowd of like 800 and 900 people, and this guy's telling his jokes, and you just hear one guy. Like, <laughs> no, I, I was standing in the back with the girl that he brought, and she was just like embarrassed. Oh, dude, she was. Aww. She, I could, I could feel that she felt bad about the six hours she had to drive back with a guy. Yeah, like I could feel it on Imagine her. Imagine the drive back. Oh no, they to no, stop no. The, to stop it. Wait, this guy is doing so bad that the headliner tells him, "Hey, go get this guy off stage. Go get him off stage." <laughs> Rock comes up behind him, 
and he has no idea that Rock is coming up behind him. But people see Rock coming up on stage, and they start cheering him. Mm -hmm. They start cheering. Rock's uh, gonna get him off. Yeah, yeah. This guy that's doing the comedy thinks they're cheering for him, so he's like, "I finally got him." Uh, yeah, I finally yeah, got yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, and then he starts like talking to this girl, like thinking that it, it's like the reaction was for him. And then Rock just grabs the other mic. Hey, wait, yeah, bájate, wait. I was cold blooded. Like real cold, cold. But like just with what Rock said, like it was he had to call the elephant in the room. Like it was so awkwardly silent that if Rock didn't say that, it wouldn't have he wouldn't have gotten the show back. But yeah. he goes, hey, wait, yeah, bájate, wait. Everybody just starts. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it was the biggest yeah. laugh of his whole set, and it was for him to get off. Oh, the thing is, is while he was up there, I was in the audience. Hey, rock, bájalo la chingada, bájalo por la happy, la chingada. Because people are vicious, dude. You know, gotcha. aquí la raza va a tocarte la boca shut up, bro. Oh. But. Uh,